take one. The, the concept, sort of ludicrous as it first sounds, is a group of young offenders with ASBOs who are brought together by this, by that common denominator, um, who get struck by lightning and take on superpowers, which are an extension of their own selves and teenage anxieties. It's a, it's a really clever way, I think, of talking about those sorts of issues. It's a bit different to everything else, and it's got quite a lot of um, balls. <laughs> You don't know what kind of dynamic you're going to strike with, with the rest of the people until you get into a room and start rehearsing and start working. Yeah, the casting process for Misfits was very widespread. Our casting director, Julie Harkin, did a sweep of the country. I think she went through over 2,000 uh, suggestions from agents, but she also did a very extensive search of you know, youth drama groups, television workshops, that type of thing. Whilst the casting process was always led by finding the best actor for, for the character, um, you know, Misfits is, is a gang show and we had to find our bunch of Misfits. Tom Green, the first director, he was, um, he really, really worked it and wanted to see who got on with what and the dynamic and stuff, so it was quite a deal. In doing that, you know, we were also looking at the different dynamic between the group. Um, so, for example, I think it was particularly interesting when we put uh, uh, Robert Sheehan with, 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 um, with Lauren Soccer, you know, plays Nathan and Kelly respectively. And, you know, such different actors and, you know, to put those together, there was a, a sparks flew and you could all of a sudden see that there was a chemistry between them and that was really exciting to watch. So, we're always looking for that dynamic within our casting as well as just the individual. My name is um, Nathan Stewart Jarrett and I play Curtis. Should be a Look, man. we need to work as a team here. Hey, that's enough. I moved to a different group. This isn't going to work for me. Nathan, again, isn't that long out of drama school, but uh, quite an experienced stage actor in many ways. And um, I think Curtis offers him a very different role uh, in a way. He, he played a big, well, not too long ago, he played a drag queen. So I think to move to a quite a sort of testosterone fueled, sort of um, pumped up athlete who'd spent his life training and in a sort of macho world, I think, was a, was a different character for, for Nathan to play. Because he's a runner and I'm not a runner. I, I did run at school and stuff, but I um, stopped and just get older and so I <laughs> can't, can't keep it up. Um, so I, I went running. I think what he does with Curtis, again, is just shifts that stereotype and, and challenges it and, um, you know, brings us a, lo a load of issues that, around Curtis's life that you know, you aren't connected to, to athletics and he's not just a stereotypical athlete who only, he's only got his training and his, his sport to talk about. Curtis is he's really, he's very driven. He's kind of, he's, I mean, he's greatly ambitious and what what really upsets him about this is he's, what he's un ultimately very disappointed about what's happened to him and who he is and where, what he's become. He's had his sort of dignity and his life and his dreams stripped from him and he's sort of having to start from ground up again and. And although that's happening, he's also finding himself perhaps amongst friends and people that he may not have sort of, you know, associated himself with before and finds himself sort of for forming relationships and friendships he might not have otherwise had. And his superpower is that he can turn back time, but only when he feels the regret. So it's kind of an emotional, it's connected to his emotions, his power. But he can kind of turn back time and come back actually as well. And I think you need the sort of slightly fatherly quality of, of Curtis in some respects, the slight more maturity of his character to allow all our other slightly um, madder elements of the show to sort of have a kinetic and fun, fun sort of uh, energy around him. If I can have a, no, it's a very original question. <laughs> if I can have a superpower in real life, I, I'm caught. Um, I think I'd be a shapeshifter. I think it'd be fun. Quite fun, but like a shape just in a in a way that I can take on any shape, whether that be human or an animal object. So I can change my size as well. So I could be a dinosaur or a toy car, or just like anything that can take any shape. I think that's actually my favourite now. I've gone into depth for that. Or I want it to turn into a gas. My name is Lauren Soccer, and the character's name I play is Kelly. Why does she squirm around? I'm not a slag. What? She has this kind of relationship, love-hate relationship with Nathan. That she she fancies him and he fancies her, but they're, they're never really an item together, so it's a little bit confusing for them. But yeah, she's such a chubby little teenager. She's a, she's a phenomenally sort of instinctive actor, and and she's very very funny. She's a 
she's a she's an amazing girl with like so much sort of spirit and fight and, and humour about her and, and I think she brought that to Kelly. I wanted the part from the moment that I read the script, I worked really hard to, to, to do everything that I could to try and get the part. I was just very happy, I wanted it badly. And on the page sometimes I don't think Kelly always read as funny and then uh, and that's what you're always looking for from an actor, someone to come in the room and and make you see, think of the character in a whole new way and, and that's exactly what Lauren did with Kelly for us and uh, she was a real find and really exciting um, and I think brings a real great sort of gutsy humour to Misfits. The guest character Jodie uh, uses her superpower on Kelly and turns her bald which uh, of course <laughs> is a bit of a rubbish superpower as Nathan says in the episode. Then it takes like two and a half hours to put on the bald cap doors uh, but that was dead funny as well because Everyone thinks, oh, I wonder what I look like bold, and I was bold. It was just the most funniest thing I've ever seen myself do, literally. The way that they flattened my hair out, so you couldn't see no lumps of my hair, was amazing. That was dead funny as well. Oh, I like your cat. No! Oh. Oh. <sighs> if I could have a superpower, it would be to be invisible invisible because I could just see what everyone does when I'm not there. Uh, my name's Ioan Preon and um, I play the character of Simon. I'm not a panty sniffer. I'm not a pervert. Uh, uh. With Ewan Rion, um, he is uh, again a Phenomenally talented actor. I, I find him magnetic is the sort of word I use for him. He has these eyes. There's a close-up in episode one where um, we hold the close-up and it is sort of, you think you might be hypnotised by the end of the shot. He just finished Spring Awakening, uh, which was a huge hit musical in the West End here. And I think he'd had a bit of Beatles mania off the back of that where they'd been locked in on the last night because the girls were hammering down the door to get at him. And, as soon as he walked in the room for me, I knew we'd found Simon. On, I worked really hard with him and Do creating a, uh, turn invisible. a very sort of interesting character that had a real darkness about him and that wasn't a stereotypical geek, but someone who perhaps was one of the more interesting characters in the game. He's gang, disappeared! But, uh, with, with an ability for real sort of light and shade in his what character. And I think as the series goes on, Simon really comes out of his shell and becomes a sort You're of uh, anti-hero of his own, really. Simon's power is uh, he can turn invisible, um, because, and I think and like all the powers in Misfits sort of come from um, a part of their personality. Each character's personality, like an insecurity, sort of comes out. And because Simon's quite socially invisible, it's kind of turned out that he's his power is invisibility, and he's kind of it's quite a painful transformation for him to, to become invisible. It's not like just sort of. Ding. And he's invisible, and, uh, and, it, and it, it comes from when he's being ignored or when he's trying to communicate with the rest of the gang, and they just sort of ignore him. Look at me! Look at me! Oh, I, I absolutely hate all the Misfits cast. I can't stand them. They made my life a living hell. <laughs> no, uh, no. I, I think I think that's one of the great things about it. We all get along really well, and I think that'll come across on screen. And we just kind of quite often just. You know, we're just, it's quite a, a light atmosphere um, on set, you know, it's not too serious and, and we all get to just kind of, you know, I suppose express ourselves, like, <laughs> sounds a bit cheesy. We just kind of get to do our own thing because I think we've all been cast quite well and it just means that um, we've got quite a nice dynamic together, I think. And we, yeah, we all have a lot of fun and get on really well and, yeah, we're going to miss him, man. I should finish now. <laughs> We're going to put you out of business. You're making us all look bad. I think, I don't know, I think immortality would be pretty rubbish one to have because you just, I think after a while you would probably get bored of living as great as it would be to live for ages, but I think, you know, it would be pretty bad to watch everyone grow old and die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not to, not to bring the vibe down or anything. <laughs> Hi, my name's Antonia Thomas um, and I play the character of Alicia in Misfits. Do I suck or blow? <laughs> 600 take one. Uh, 
Yeah. So again, on the page, you know, Alicia's character could have read one way, and, and it, she was just all sex, sex, sex. Uh, she was, you know, quite a no down dirty girl, really. But in a way, I think, you know, uh, Antonia brings a much more complex character to her. There's much more vulnerability about about Alicia now. Alicia is quite a difficult young lady. She's um, quite a kind of a princessy character who has been very, very spoiled by her parents and had sort of everything that she wanted. Um, kind of meaning that she sort of went off the rails and is very into partying and drugs. And it's insane, really. I'm totally worried. She yeah. develops a power <laughs> <laughs> where when men touch her, they grow very lustful towards her. Um, a bit of a difficult power, one that she can't control at all, and um, it turns out to be very frustrating. She, you know, I think handles the, the sort of personal problems that, that come, comes with that really adeptly, and, and, in, and out of that comes a really interesting sort of way of looking at, you know, relationships and, and, uh, and sex, and, and, and I think she handles that really well. Um, and again, just you know, brought another depth and layer and complexity to the character. I, I think, and I think the other thing to say about Antonia is that it was her very first job out of drama school. She was actually in her graduation play, uh, I think, in the matinee when she got the call from her agent to say that she'd got the part. Um, I think she probably nearly passed out with excitement and um, had to call her back once she'd sort of pulled herself together and, and, and realised that she was going to do it. I really like the power of, um, I don't know if you ever saw the programme Alice Mack, <laughs> which was on telly years ago, where she used to be able to kind of turn herself into this liquid form and then kind of, I don't know, get under doors and go into weird gaps and then sort of reform into her human self again, which I thought was an amazing power. So I reckon I quite like that. My name is Robert Archibald Sheehan and I play Nathan. Me? I was done for uh, eating some pick and mix. Bollocks. 3.33, take three. Second sticks. That's borderline, this is borderline <laughs> racism. Uh, Robert Sheehan probably has done, uh, Robert Sheehan's probably the most experienced of our, of our misfits and, and I think in a way finding Nathan's character was kind of in, in a way for us finding the, the voice for the humour of the show as well. My character is basically like um, a James Bond figure with a wank sock and uh, he, uh, he, uh, he's the mouthy one of the group I suppose you can say. The slightly more intolerable one, intolerable because his sense of humour becomes so annoying and so, um, so irritating after a while that it's hard to be in his company. Nathan, prick. Nathan is a, a very dominant character in, in the series, and, and you know his comedy does often lead. And I, and I think once we'd once we'd seen that coming from Robert so so clearly and effectively, um, you could really see how the show was gonna was gonna was gonna sort of shake out really and and, and come together. We owe it to ourselves to party hard. We owe it to each other. Looking amongst yourselves, looking amongst yourselves as well. And this is it. This is our time. Yes, yeah, some of us will overdose or go mental. Charles Darwin says you can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs. My initial impression when I first read the script was, what a pile of garbage. But then they assured me that it was good. And, you know, since I can't trust my own taste, I went with theirs. And here I am, 11 and a half weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him, is there any good at table service? As all the cast and crew of Misfits know, I'm the best at table tennis. And the man holding my head may think he's the best, but he's not. He's just a very close second. Not even close, a distant dot of a second. Did you ever win against him? Yes, once. <laughs> I would have the power to make people take out their genitals in public and then so when they snapped back into themselves they'd be really embarrassed. Parkington. 554 take two. Nice. <laughs> Classic.